So some of my people don't understand these English words like reconciliation. <coughs> it's about that we don't we can't understand why we have to reconcile, why we have to treaty, because we haven't done anything wrong. It's up to them to surrender and and uh, come and sit down and talk with us. But so far, none of that has happened. I'm uh, Kevin Buzzacott. I'm from the Arabana people in Lake Eyre, in that area. I regard myself as a peacemaker. I'm doing this recording from the Aboriginal Tent Embassy. Uh, we have uh, the old Ganya set up there, which is we call the old Parliament House. We have our sacred fire. We have been here for 48 years since uh, our heroes and legends set that place up in 72. Uh, that took all the, took all the hard stuff up here and uh, it's a platform for all our people to come and talk, bring their issues and we have been pounded and grounded and all sorts of stuff happened to us while uh, we were here and it's still the same, nothing has changed. The government failed to come down and acknowledge us as uh, uh, as people, we are the oldest living people around. Look, look at our history. Uh, we are treated like uh, animals, I guess, by the government. They have uh, all sorts of policies against us and uh, we can't the embassy is the place where we can put our issues. And uh, people like me and others, we, we, we are planning to do some big stuff it, this year. We also have the virus, the car, uh, that virus around is scaring people from coming together. And, uh, but, we have to keep our struggle going. We have to keep on trying to educate people and re-educate people about our, our, uh, our issues, ourselves. Uh, the climate change, uh, all this stuff with the bushfires and the water shortage, it's not a natural disaster, it's a man-made. It's man-made by the government and the giant corporation, the developments, the mining companies. They are really uh, killing us as well as killing our country. And we don't want that. Uh, people should, the government and ordinary people should be wake up. They should be woken up by now because of the bushfires and everything. What does it take to wake people up? And uh, we're calling on the people power. Uh, the people need to stand up and front the government and say, we've got to stop doing this. We have to make the future for our little ones. We have to make this old country safe and safe for our future of our kids. And uh, I hope you all enjoy what we're talking about and uh, do follow-ups. Uh, we sort of a bit uh, closed down a bit at the moment. We're restructuring the embassy. We've got prickles in the, on the grass. We've got, uh, and also on top of that, we have that virus that's slowing people up. People can't gather too much from while that's on. We're waiting to see the outcome of it. They reckon it hasn't peaked yet. So, and we hope that uh, it doesn't, 
Ah, get too many people, we hope that they can come up with the solution. And uh, also, we, we can open doors as well, as far as knowledge and peace goes. So don't be frightened to talk to us. And uh, it is a long journey, it is a hard journey that people are facing. Everybody's, everybody's looking for a way out. And uh, nobody deserves what's been happening over the last what, so many hundred years. And uh, we want to make peace for ourselves and peace for the land. There is uh, our structure, with our structure, we have prevention, we have everything in our structure until 1788 when the arrival of the, the British. They've interfered with our life pretty well and uh, uh, as far as their policies of reconciling, we didn't invade them, they invaded us. So some of my people don't understand these English words like reconciliation. <coughs> it's about that we don't, we can't understand why we have to reconcile, why we have to treaty, because we haven't done anything wrong. It's up to them to surrender and and uh, come and sit down and talk with us. But so far. None of that has happened. We have never had uh, government officials and people come down here talking to us about all these stuff. It's like uh, their policy, it's on their turn, their agenda, it's not our agenda. But the first thing is to come and talk about it. How we're going to make uh, how we're going to live together on this country, this great old country, and uh, make peace with each other, get rid of all the racist stuff. Racism is no good. Everybody suffers. Get rid of the war, the wars that they they've been involved in. Nobody wins with war. There's always suffering both sides. So there is a lot of things we need to sit down and talk about. And uh, it's like going back to square one to work out what do we need, how we're going to live, what is the future. And we can't go into the future properly until we unlock. We have to unlock yesterday, what happened yesterday. That's a part of the healing, the, the mental, all this stuff. We have to unlock yesterday before we can then talk about it today, so then we can work out where do we go tomorrow. And uh, it's a simple thing, it's a very simple. All you've got to do is come down and have a yarn. That's what we're talking about. Uh, you can hear the birds, the birds are singing out, you must always hear the birds. They know what's going on. Their environment's been upset as well, bushfires and whatnot. Uh, they always got to put the money to the problem. Money can't solve this problem, it has to be the people have to sit down and talk about it. Well, money is good, you've got to use money, they've made money, so you have to use money to go from A to B, to travel and uh, to, to survive. But it's not the big thing here. The big thing here is talking peace. And uh, it's a simple thing, very simple.
Back to the old map here. These are my two countries here. The blue one and the green one. And there's the old lake, my old lake, old Bundu. They call him Bundu. But all these, I'm connected to all these mob out here. All the way down. Even over here. Uh, our res uh, talking about reconciliation you see the colors this is their made uh, the government made map that they've, they've got all these people it's not that accurate a lot of people are not happy with it it's uh, it locks people in so if uh, for argument's sake we can if these any of these other mob over here sings out for help, we're supposed to go and help them. That's our type of reconciliation. It's already embedded in our ancient uh, structure. So if the neighbours sing out, we're allowed to go and help the neighbours and vice versa. But with this newly native title system, it's worked, it doesn't allow that. You can't go and talk with these mob because these mob, uh, 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 they uh, maybe, they've got their own lawyers, their own policies. This is the trick of the government. It's very devastating, this native title. We've got to get rid of it. It's no good. It's not working for us. And the land council, it's not working for us. It also allows us to, uh, mining companies and other developers, to, de to develop our land without our say. We haven't got much say. It's not like how it used to be. We governed this old country without those people. And we did it with love, respect, and we cared for the old place. Uh, this way is different. So the reconciliation, like I said, they need to come down and really talk about all this so we can undo all this and make it the way we want it. Not only we, or for all people. We know how to do it. This is the thing. Uh, as we said, we had this gathering coming up. You bring your scientists, we'll bring our scientists. And uh, so that's part of that. We've had the other Prime Minister Rudd, Kevin Rudd, say sorry. But uh, there's no follow-up to sorry. But it was good, I guess it was good for him to say sorry for the people who, who was there and all that. And, but there's been no follow-up. There hasn't been... Uh, Damages, uh, people have been moved all around the place, names changed, culture loss, whatever, the whole lot. There's never been any whatever. It's good for him to get up and say sorry, but uh, they need to do a lot more than that. The other thing is, yeah, it's very difficult. I mean, I'm not against, we're not against <laughs> everybody. We, we target the government. It's the, we're sitting here in Canberra, ACT, that made this place the capital of Australia. They, uh, it's their policies, their agenda. We have no input into their agenda as far as reconciliation, as far as treaty and all this is about. We still have our sovereign rights, which we're born with, and, and our role, obligations and responsibility to look after the land and look after ourselves as far as programs and setting up. You know, we are we are, we're like a refugee. 
We like about people to this country. We are a refugee in our own country. And we can't go to a lot of these places because the farmers and other people have got it and we, we then will be trespassing and we will end up in their courts. We will end up in jail because of their legislations and their policies. This is where it's wrong. This is why we have to bring it all back to square one, back to square one and start restructuring the whole life. And every time the government does something, they shoot themselves in the foot. They make mistakes. They do another election, get another policy in, another whatever it's called. They don't know how to look after this old place. They don't know how to look after us. They don't even know how to look after their own people. Their own people are coming to us because they've been, they've come out in chains on the boats as well. They've been slaved, used as, you know. So what goes around comes around. Now these people are coming over to us because they know we have got the answer. And we don't mind that. We, we placid people, we friendly people, and uh, we have got a lot of work out there, and especially to the uni students, we need just, just need to work out what uh, type of uh, uh, thing you want to get into. The peace is the only way. There's no other way but peace. That's what we're saying. We've got all our problems out there, all around. It's not a competition. Who has the worst problems? We've got drug and alcohol. We've got that horrible thing they call ice. We've got the coppers hassling us, locking our kids up in jail and whatnot. We have the governments fully supporting those people. They're still shooting us and killing us in and out of jail, custody, and that has got to stop. Why, what it's doing, it's blocking us, all our people in the world, to come together and make peace because of the stupid policies they have. And uh, It sounds like I'm going on, and I am going on, but uh, somebody has to, some people, some group have to tell these mob that they can't do it anymore. We're running out of time. The climate, uh, climate is in, the whole earth is in awful trouble, and they still uh, tend to dig, dig up the old place, uh, gaping big holes, polluting everything. The poor old rivers can't run freely anymore because they've got all this developments, developers, developments going on, and uh, they are so far off of peace. And I say, it's peace is not far. It's gonna happen. All this virus, all this stuff's happening, they have to wake up. Simple as that. We, a lot of us have already reconciled. We've reconciled, that's our structure, our life. This people, we're already there. But we still, they've bucked up a lot of things, so we still have to get, re we've got to reconcile a bit more with our people. And then the full reconci reconciliation, this government reconciliation is, it's a little bit tricky. We don't know, it's like on their terms. Be different if they put it on our terms. You know, say, all right, it's a rich country. If you're talking about money, if money's the object, you have a dollar, I have a dollar. That's fair. It's not you have a million dollars and I have one dollar. It should be, you know, we've got to be equalised. The, the scale, we have to make sure that it's 
you look after, we look after you, and you look after us, and all that stuff. That's how it should be. That's what I call full peace and full reconciliation, or, or a treaty, uh, a treaty, but don't get rid of our sovereignty. We the, they've got to acknowledge first that we are the original people of this old country. We know we've mastered it for 40,000 years plus, and we know how to go here, go there, burn off bushfires and so on and so on. We know all that. But we're just waiting for the mob, the government, the people who, well, if not the government, let's do it with the people power. Let the people come and we sit down and make it. I mean, this government system, it's not even working for them, let alone us. It's got to work for everybody. It's got to work for the creatures. It's got to work for the old earth. We can't keep on doing what we're doing to it. That's simple as that. There's no other, no other, and there's no other way. You don't, you don't have to be a scientist or a professor or anybody to see it. That we are in big trouble, big trouble. And if we don't stop, if you're going to get, you know, this virus and this all these other stuff. You don't know what's coming, what's next. And uh, we've got to stop raping the old earth. We've got to stop raping the old mother. We can't keep on digging and cutting down trees and and gaping big hole in the land and. You know, we've got to think about our little ones. Where are they going to go? How are they going to live? They're going to hate us. Our kids are going to grow up and say, hey, you fellas, you know, you've left us a big mess. Yeah, uh, the another thing is about the Aboriginal land, land issue. The same thing as I touched on it a bit with the native title and the policies. Uh, they have made it so we can't go on our, some of our lands, our country, we can't go on it because it's been taken up by, say, Maralinga Bomb, it's a restricted area, you can't go out there, you've got to get a certain whatever, you can't go to Woomera Rocket Range, you can't go to Olympic Dam, all these big giant uranium mines and waste dump. You can't go there because it's all prohibited. And uh, 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 before they'd set those places up, that was our land. That was our sacred place where people would go, you know, and do ceremonies and, 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 and all that. Now you can't go. Uh, there's a lot of unanswered stuff. It's like the massacre sites, all the massacre sites, all our dear old souls that they've massacred. We can't go and visit those places and do healing ceremonies and that there because other people are sitting on it, farmers and whatnot. We'd be trespassing. And uh, we need to do all that. We need to do all that. And uh, this, our kids, our people are locked up in prison. We're not jailed, we're not, we free people. We lived on this old earth, we roamed this old lovely old country without being locked up, not in bars around us for petty crime because they put us in this situation in towns and cities and whatnot. And they've gave us all this uh, disease and stuff that had. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do. The minute they realise that, then we can start the healing process right throughout the country, right throughout the world for that matter. And we could make people happy, make the whole earth happy, the earth happy, we're happy. The earth's sad, we're sad. Someone, same with the whole country. Yeah, what happened to your own hometown? Home they, uh, when they've been raided, our 
our country, it's 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 uh, it just changed everything. We got sick, we died, we're still sick. We all sorts of stuff happened to us, and uh, the graves. The cemeteries are full, the jails are full, the hospitals are full. Wow, it's not life, it's not living the way we should be living, the way we know for 40,000 years, 60,000 years plus, whatever. The animals are the same, the animals are suffering. There's no water, their environment, our beautiful, pure environment being devastated by by this uh, the crown England whatever they didn't come the proper way maybe they don't know how to come the proper way but it's never too late to sit down and say come here the whole embassy's been here right under their nose for 48 years <laughs> 48 years they still haven't come down. They still haven't come down and said, what do you want? Have a, let's have a yarn. Let's have a talk. Good people should do that. Sit down and have a yarn. We can do smoking ceremonies. We can share a cup of tea or feed. They can't even do that. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about what happened in 48 years ago, 1972? Why, why this? 1972. From what I hear from the, I knew a lot of those people that started off here. The whole people from the streets of Sydney and Brisbane and Melbourne and all around. See, we were put in missions and so forth. Now, we were, they, we were doing it hard because of the policies that they, they, they came with, right? And they, so the, the mob sent the young fellas up here to have a yarn with the, with the, then across the road here, the, the government. Uh, uh, what was his name? I forget the name of that government, the uh, PM. McMahon, I think his name was. They went across to talk to him about our problems and what happened. They got bashed, they got jailed, they got all sorts of things happened to them. So they went away and they come back again a couple of times and they're still here. They still, they've changed uh, Prime Ministers since. And here we are in the year 2000, <laughs> nobody's ever come down. You can see how we're living here, it's pretty rough, it's pretty cold in the winter time and uh, we've been pounded and grounded by other people, the cops and uh, that sent their bad guys down to get rid of us, uh, monotail cocktails, blowing up places and all sorts of things. And uh, all they need to do is just come down. And we got our mob in there, I don't know what they're doing. We got our Aborigines in there, our brothers and whatever sisters in there. They haven't, we haven't even seen any of them. Uh, they're busy doing policies and structures and constitution changes and what not without our consent. No one's talked to us about it. And that's where the problem is. That's why people, that's why there's a lot of anger out there and a lot of bitterness out there because the people are really pissed off with them. They haven't come down. There's only a few people who's, well, I don't say they're benefiting. They're selling their souls to, to, to whatever. And you got our mob out there selling their souls and destroying their own sacred places. So how do you work that out? My mob's the same, I argue with my mob, what are you doing work with the mining companies? They're doing uranium. Uranium's one of the biggest kill killing material substance of all time. Then they want to dump waste back. Then they're doing all this other stuff. 
uranium they make all these weapons depleted weapons bombs bombing people killing people uh, uh, devastating countries destroying beautiful countries and uh, it's going to take a long time for that to heal because they're still doing it they haven't stopped because of the greed and the selfishness once you get greedy and you're selfish then you don't care about nothing. You don't care about this tree, you could cut it down. You don't care about the birds, you don't care about the people. It's crazy. There yeah, one another question about this organization. So is the member of the embassy selected or volunteers? We, it's been, when they've set it up, my first involvement, I come down here and they said, this is a platform for all our mob to come down and put your issues. You could march, you could put your signs up and all that. And that hasn't changed. We have, we've had, uh, we've got a lot of people from different parts of the whole country that comes in, come down. And we, because we haven't really had a good crack at it, uh, we, we still got a long way to go. We've got to take the embassy to another level so that we can, you know, you got, this is ACT, the capital. You've got all these other countries, they got all their embassies here, and this is our embassy. Their embassies is fully resourced and equipped in, in all sorts of ways. And look at us. We just we got the old fire, which is beautiful. We got ourselves, which is beautiful. We're still hanging in here, we've got the birds coming down, we got people, good people coming in and out. So we're not far off it, we just want uh, a good crack at it. So we can re-equip ourselves, so we can be resourced enough to be able to bring these people down. We virtually have to, to make the changes. If these people don't listen to us, we have to practically bring this country to a standstill like the, what the virus is doing now. I can't say that word. What is the cor coronavirus? Coronavirus yeah. is yeah. bringing this country to a standstill. We're going to have to do something like that too to wake these people up. If they don't, hurry up and wake up now with this virus. And it's a sad thing. We shouldn't have to do that. People should be smart enough to be able to come down and say, my advice to the all the people is that, uh, especially the young and the students and that, sky's the limit of what you could learn and how you could do. And you know what, Russ, you will feel better in the mind and in the heart and everything about it. You will find peace within yourself. You will find peace with your family. You will find peace everywhere. And that's what we dream of. We know it's there. It's just one step away, because why we know it's there, we've lived it, bros. We've got it. We've got the recipe here. We've got it. Might have a smoke, eh? Yeah. So, what is your vision for Aboriginal Australians in the future? So, the independence or a real autonomy in I, the federal government? Well, we we push all these stuff like land rights, always was, and everything. We push all that stuff, but. I think uh, I think I'd like to run my own life. I'd like to run my own country. I'd like to, because I know how to look after my own country. I know how to look after my own house. I mean, everybody, sh everybody should feel that. You don't want other people telling you how to live, how to look after your own place whether it may be down the river or down the beach or in the desert, you know, wherever. We know what we want. And uh, we're not getting that acknowledgement or support from any way. We're poor. We're the richest people on earth as far as culture and everything goes. But when it comes to the money or the resource, it's all been stolen from us. They got it all. So if 
So that means it's, it's not under the federal system, all right? You're going to develop a new alternative system? Or? It's the start. This is the start, the government. We know we should, we can govern this country. They can't. We know what this old country needs. And we can sit down and talk with the people, do a big corporate plan or something uh, to work out how we're going to live, what do we need, how are we going to do it. Do we need this? Do we need bombs? Do we need pollution? Do we need sickness? Do we need this virus? How are we going to do it? I don't want this virus. I don't even want a common cold. I don't want to get sick even. Nobody wants to get sick or have cancer or anything. No one wants to die and lose their loved ones and families. Not because of sickness. Natural age, yes, but not the way it's going. It's terrible. Yeah, the another thing is here, it reads about the language stuff or culture, Aboriginal government. We a, a Our mob got their own, they got their, they got their language, they got their culture, they got everything. And uh, like I said, it's trying to unravel it or where, how do you put it out or how do you, what do you keep it to your own self. There's a lot of things we don't tell people because that's our sacred business. Uh, uh, until or unless everybody comes to the party. We've got to get this crookness out of us, this stealing, this bad things what we carry. The monkey on the back, the wardrobe, the penny got to drop. Then people can trust people. At the moment, a lot of people won't trust anybody. They don't trust me, they don't trust you, they don't trust no one because we don't know what's what your agenda is so you know so we but just the basic stuff let's just talk the basic let's just kick something off let's just talk yeah. that's the thing so what's your future plan for this embassy so we want our embassy to go ahead like any other place but actually I think we we know because I said before we, we took the path Pounding. We shouldn't have to fight anymore because our mob, our heroes and legend started this place up. They took the pain and punishment and got killed and poor old people now have passed and uh, there's still a few around. I don't think we wish that on anybody, really. We want people to just start making peace, take that first step towards peace and see where it goes. Therefore, it, it can unleash so much things that we would never be able to handle. So let's make this move quick. Let's make it today. Let's make the change right now. Not next year or year after or what not. We get another bushfire next year. We get another draining of the rivers. We get another two wars on. Don't go invading and killing people. No more. Finish. Surrender. Surrender. Most of the time I'm back in the country and I'm talking to my people, all sorts of people everywhere trying to get rid of mining companies, especially uranium mining companies, that's killing, that's killing this old lake, that's killing my country, killing my people, and we're out there really shaking the system to try to get them out. And, uh, Uranium, Olympic Dam Uranium is one of the biggest support 
to global changing. It's got wars, all those wars you see, Star Wars on TV where the uranium is made in the missiles, bombs, it's out there. It's a big, to, it's a big uh, contributor to the climate business. Big. So we're out there talking, that's my role. I was born to do some of that, like a lot of our mob, we are born to do, to be, to take all this mob on because of the old country. We love the old country, that's our job to look after it. And we have to tell the bad people who's doing the wrong about it, stop doing it, don't do it anymore. Find it another way. Uh, there's people out there work and they say, oh, we've got to work, we've got to find work. Yeah, but you don't find work in a horrible place like that doing uranium and making bombs and, and murdering people. And uh, it's a crazy, it's crazy, but we have to do it. Some of us have been born to do that, and that's, what, that's why we're here, that's why we're running around, you see us, uh, you know. And we get burnt out, we get burnt out, and other people comes up, take our place, and, uh, but, it's happening, it's going to happen. Yeah, Whether we like it or they like it, the big spear or the big axe is going to drop. And everybody hopefully might wake up. Yeah. If they don't, we're all doomed. Could you please point your hometown? Just, yeah. It's somewhere about here, somewhere uh, down here. So, what's the name? Arabana. 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 That's your hometown? Yeah, that's my own country. That's the uranium yes, uh, mining going... The mining boom is just on the border here. It's on our brother sister country. We, we share that country. And then they're taking the water out of the Lake Air Basin, which runs, the basin runs way down everywhere. And the water they take taken out is 52 million litres a day. Could be more, could be less. Depends on what day, what time, how they need it. And it's a very toxic place. Don't go there. People work there. The kids is born sick. People have died there. A lot of things happening. And it never used to be that way. It was a pure old place. Just like all of the old country. It was beautiful, pure. Yeah, you've been against that for in the past few decades, 20 years, 30 years? It's been good. Uh, it's been good. Even before that, we had the uh, woman rocket range that used to send rockets up. And then before that, we had the Marilinga bomb, atom bombs tested out there that, whew, and it went everywhere. The, the fallout, the radiation gone everywhere. It's still out there. It's pretty bad. So your career is mostly activist now, right? Well, it's like I've spent this all my life doing this. And uh, I don't say I'm an activist or a protester. I say I'm a peacemaker. peacemaker yeah. That's the one, peacemaker. Sometimes when people go rallying, marching, or that then they say the protesters have done this. They don't, the, the climate change mob was up here the other week. They were, they call them the protesters. They're not the protesters. So this is where the media got to get it right. They are peacemakers. They are trying to tell these bad guys, bad people, don't do it. They are make peace. Don't, because they're worried about their future. They're worried about themselves. They're worried about the animals and the creatures and, of course, their kids, the future. So they are peacemakers. Don't call them protesters anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You well, are not activists. Do you, you rather prefer the peacemakers? Yeah. We're peacemakers. Yeah. All, of, all of our people that protest, they're protesting for a reason, a good reason. They are, prote they are peacemakers. Uh, the media makes it look silly. 
because the media is there. Media works for them more than for us. And um, they don't know it. We could save their life. The peacemakers are lifesavers. They can make, they could save people's lives instead of doing these stupid things like Dani mine and digging up the land, digging up the earth, polluting everything, wars on people, bombing this country, bombing that country, and crazy. Make peace. Walking out to the fire. So you got me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, the biggest, or maybe, yeah, the biggest weapon is education. You have to be educated, educated in the right way. To education up here is the biggest weapon of all times. People must know that. What's happened in this last 200 something years here, 232 years, is the curriculum. Our curriculum of 40,000 years, our curriculum of 40,000 years is being inter interrupted by this other curriculum. Now this same curriculum that they put out on everybody, schools, preschool, uni, college, they've, uh, <clears throat> even the little one, they get that little one, they brainwash that little kid, sent the little one to the preschool, to the childcare, and so on and so on, then the other schools, then into uni, into college, all that stuff. The curriculum needs to change. This curriculum we all learning now is no good. It doesn't make you a decent person. It doesn't you're learning the bad things. So that then you are an expert in destroying the earth or destroying people. Uh, and that's why a lot of people fail. They don't go on with it. They leave their uh, whatever. Some of the people people stick with it because they feel like they've, they've wasted their so many years of learning to be a professor or a scientist or some other thing. And uh, it's not actually delivering to the world or to the people of the world, the human beings. Us human beings have been through this factory. That's, then we become bad. We become bad people because this curriculum is teaches us to be bad. Not like our, the whole way, we love the country. We loved each other. We knew how to hunt and gather. We knew how to survive. But this curriculum from across the road here is bad. So we have to change that so we can make life better. Whether you're a doctor, a scientist, or ordinary person, <coughs> So we need to look at the curriculum, throw this curriculum out. We don't want that, we don't want that, we've got to learn about this. Throw that out the window, throw that out the window, so that we can be good people, human people. And then we all educated the good way, if that's the word. Because it is a big bomb by itself, education educate people, re-educate people about what we, how we meant to live on this beautiful earth. We've only got the one earth, not as if we've got ten other earths we can jump, we can muck up one and jump on the next one, and then muck that up and jump on the next one. We've only got the one old earth, and we have to look after it. And uh, 
So they're the things I've been taught by my old people and everybody. Is that, and you learn as you go along. You're never too old or never too young to learn the real thing. Some of us don't make it because of the mess we're in now. But the ones who are going to make it will really live happily ever after. Yes, uh, it's got to be fixed up. This is the first flag our mob flew it uh, back in 72 uh, at the old embassy. And uh, we've got to fix this up a bit and uh, then we get some flags made and this is the flag we'll be flying uh, symbolising our struggle here at the embassy and what it means for. I guess other people coming from other countries, uh, they need to acknowledge uh, our mob, uh, our country, our people, and you've got to come the right way. Uh, Across the road behind me, they do the citizenship uh, every Australia Day. They do their citizenship across the road, across the river, across the across there. And uh, we haven't. We the real ones. You need to come to our country. You need to acknowledge us and come the right way by coming to us. The government probably won't allow that because they'll extradite people who don't listen to them. But uh, we're the bosses of this country. We're the, we're the original people. And this is gonna be our original flag down the track. And uh, we'll, uh, It's like me going to their country. If I went to one of their countries, I will acknowledge those people. And uh, we're asking for these mob to acknowledge us too when they come here. Don't just come here and uh, uh, hang out with those people, because that's the wrong way. Come to us, come here to us. That's what we're on about. And uh, we could learn you could learn a lot from us, and I guess we can lo learn a lot from you. So uh, that's the first step of making peace. Don't be frightened to come down and talk to us. And uh, we have passports, we have, uh, we have the fire, we can bring people in through the fire and uh, and about passports and whatever. So then you have free passage to walk our country. You don't just jump on a bus and just go around Australia <coughs> without getting the proper approval from us. That's what we say. So now I'm up out there, got the tourists, tourists around the place. They do the right thing. But as far as coming to the big place here, you need to acknowledge us to get that safe passage, free passage. And, uh, okay, sky's the limit of what you can learn, all you, all you uh, young students. Yeah, and uh, it's simple. Educate, re-educate, and don't, don't be afraid to ask. Come down the beyond. We're not going to bite you, so to speak. Okay, thanks very much for listening to me. It's been an honour and a pleasure to talk to you.